What's up guys and welcome back. This is Par73 bringing you the blast from the past Myth World Cup 1999. A double elimination tournament uh, that consisted of 96 teams. We are down to 16 teams in one of the elimination rounds of the bottom bracket in DE4 between the men of Rohan and Victor Semper. <laughs> Um, last game we saw the teams tied out on crack CTF the match scored 7 to 7 each team contesting and each team uh, yeah contesting with less than 50% and each team having 50% uh, remaining left of their units We'll have to see how this game goes, as I predict this will be another slower pace game, whereas the Game 3 allies should uh, pick up pace a little, close out this match. I noticed that one of the players for VS has left. I'm not so sure which player that was, but it is now a 6-7 game, and introducing VS in Game 2, we have Nalot T-Cell. Uh, captaining the team Neon Gods. Followed up with him is Severian, who had the most impressive ratios of Game 1. We have Daksha, the Slickster, Sir Lothar, and Cyclops. For the men of Rohan, this game they are led by McManus, their heavy hitter from the first game. Next up is Rohan. Monte Six, Skeletor, Bishop, Gandalf, and Toast. Rohan taking the team for his, uh, the troll for his men of Rohan and Daksha and Nela T cell splitting the VS tro two to one respectively. VS opting for a three fetch here. Men of Rohan going for five, as well as five dwarves. Uh, VS only opting for four dwarves, uh, loading up on, well, both teams, Max Solus and Spiders. I believe they've been, they loaded up on the melee and the game has started, so let's extend the view here and look at the uh, beautiful Dark Canyon. We've got balls everywhere. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. And uh, those seven in the mid are joined by these other three. Although I guess you could include that one as well. And those are the 11 balls on the map. Each ball in this game is worth one point, and winning will net your team five points. <laughs> With an uneven amount of balls on the map, this means that there will be no tie on this map. So we'll have to see how it goes, as it looks like Men of Rohan will secure this mid ball, as Daksha might actually move in to pressure Rohan's tro. And taking some hits, but it looks like the damage is pretty even so far. And uh, VS Spiders are making a move for this Eastern uh, Isolated Ball of Men of Rohan. It looks like they might be able to snag that back. Uh, Men of Rohan's going after that VS Ball. That would actually give them a 7-4 lead. Right now it is 6-5. Uh, which would break down to an 11-5 uh, scoring spread. Minimum differential in points here is, is what six points, I believe. So this is an evenly played match. We can probably see one of the teams being uh, ahead by six points at the end. <laughs> we'll just have to see, and we have some of the players lagging. Uh, Men of Rohan able to secure this ball in the northeast as predicted. Uh, good play by them to secure that ball. It's going to give them 7 4 lead <coughs> in targets. 
12-4 lead overall. C Slicks are trying to uh, bomb Daksha's tro here, but Daksha staying out of the range. Men, uh, the Rohan, <laughs> Rohan himself is pressuring Daksha's tro pretty closely here. Could probably get in some extra hits and land that last tro uh, close to half HP, but now that they're not so clumped and obviously not so well microed, this will not be happening. And I'm surprised I don't see these spiders coming in to uh, trap the tro here. And it looks like uh, VS might actually get this ball back somehow. Although, Nailot taking quite a bit of damage from the enemy Solus. And in the middle, <laughs> we have uh, Rohan just... He's, he's playing over here in the east part of the map. Just walking his units right through mid. Quick way to lose 15 Zerks. Ain't it the truth? So, uh, Men of Rohan up with a three ball lead, but down 10%. In, guards, in regards to units on the map, we'll see here over in the far west, unscouted, is the Slickster moving a spider pack around. He probably wants to threaten any of the backfield uh, men of Rohan balls that he can potentially steal them and Nayla T-Cell's tro is taking hits it's gonna go down to Rohan's three tro and blunder one way blunder another way unfortunately And I guess Nailot thought he was going to get backed up by his buddy Severarian, but it did not happen as uh, he's actually requesting for someone to take his units away. He must be uh, focused on somewhere else, but I don't see where. He's trying to use the souls, apparently. Well, I don't see him move much. But hey, so we still got about 10 minutes to go here. Men of Rohan putting uh, BS in a position where they will have to push to secure victory. Bishop, he's moving in. Will he be able to take out a soul with his spider? He is. And it looks like Nailot moving around the eastern part of the map. Men of Rohan gathering around their seven balls of steel. Uh, they might be pinched here pretty soon, or at least surrounded. Uh, Lothar holding the west with his souls. Severian, Daksha. They are remaining mid. Cyclops moving around towards the southern part of this position, along with Nailot moving from the east to the southern part. Rohan's gonna come out and say hello. with this beautiful extended view provided by Project Magma we can see all of Moore's units on the screen Rohan looking like he wants to pick a fight with uh, the opposing leader and we got action folks as Rohan gets a kick in this Zerk he's red he's pissed off he'll be swinging that sword faster than ever 
And uh, at the same time, Monte Six is going to be rushing Sir Lothar Solus with his spiders, uh, decimating them. Really, I don't see any of these Solas uh, remaining. They might even turn the flip side on Severian as <laughs> Rohan just picking apart Nalot's units. He's now supported by Skeletor's uh, Berserkers. As uh, McManus continues to pressure these souls, Fetch is going to get his shot off, but a spider makes his way over to the Fetch, and it might go down. And those souls have just saved that Fetch's life. And uh, Lo Lothar, as well as Severia, unable to hold off that little spider push that actually did quite a bit of damage. And on top of that, with Nalot getting rushed by the 3 tro, uh, percentages have changed. Men of Rohan now have a 6% advantage, maybe 7% advantage, as well as a 3 ball advantage. And McManus is saying, hey, we might have the lead, but we want more. And it uh, looks like Rohan will engage with this small force of Cyclops over here. That will be kicked to pieces. And I'd say we're at a fairly uh, stable stalemate here, except Men of Rohan does have the ball lead. If the game ends like this, they will walk into the next point, uh, next game with a eight point advantage. And with six minutes remaining, uh, maybe we'll see a little bit more action here. As both teams are uh, thinking about assaulting and flanking their opponents. Men of Rohan's strategy will be, it looks like, to flank these uh, souls and spiders around the map, uh, preferably unscouted, so they can come and creep up on these uh, remaining four VS balls. And I believe Rohan is leading the game in kills at this point. Uh, his three tro have a combined 17 kills. And I wonder how much percentage of that is the 30% missing from VS. Lothar is still upset about losing a tro AFK. Nalot saying, well you have to believe it. Because <laughs> we did. Lothar in a state of denial, so be a somewhat distracted while men of Rohan Flanking the soul pack around. <laughs> Cyclops is focused, however, he said we gotta guard our balls at home. There's only 342 left. I don't know if any uh any direct assaults would actually work out for either team's favor at this moment.
and some spiders going down. And it looks like Rohan's going to be pushing in here. <laughs> well, his team is saying, don't lose Tro, I wish you'd come home. But you can tell his adrenaline's pumping. And he's just going to be taking hits here from these souls. They might actually stone that Tro. He's pretty close to being stoned. He's about to pick up that doobie. But makes it out of there. Rohan's pulling uh, these souls that way. She's actually opening up for this push in the backfield by Monty Six. And it looks like Nailot's thinking about pushing up through this mid chasm. But that spells death. And uh, Nailot having a really tough game here. Uh, looks like more percentages going down. It's now 83% more to 66% VS, and Severian has spotted Monte 6. And Monte 6, with a nice line formation, is going to be throwing these Solar Spears right through the blob of Severian souls. Uh, interesting to think how the Solar Spears just go right through the enemy solas uh, essentially that one spear could hit two or three solas at one time because the unit uh, because the spears just simply pass through and Monty has this breakaway he could go for it and I think he is this is some good fucking action I can't believe this shit but Lothar in range I don't think it will be happening today and he's able to grab one and Nayla, don't let him ball us. Well, uh, VS not really pushing over here. We will uh, see Monte 6 going down there, almost <laughs> sneaking away with all of the VS balls, these tro, these dwarves, the zerks, the fetch, all unable to really help out. Uh, thank God for Sir Lothar. He's going to be keeping VS in the game here. <laughs> As with 10 seconds left, it appears this game will end 4 points for VS, 7 points in balls, and 5 points in a victory for Men of Rohan, giving them 12. And, uh... Since the match was 7 on 7 before... That means VS will have 11 points. And... Men of Rohan have 19 points. So it's 19 to 11. Only a 6 point differential. Let's hop into the statistics of this uh, game. We'll talk about it a little more. And then we'll move on to game three and the uh, conclusive finale between these teams. And uh, starting in statistics is Men of Rohan. Very own McManus, their captain, two kills, four losses. Monte six coming up big for his team here 17 kills, 18 losses. 110 damage, almost securing away some sneaky plays at the end of the game. Rohan with his tro, and uh, it appears he had some berserkers as well, potentially. Maybe some spiders. He's going to net 178 damage, leading the game in damage. Uh, he respectively had 16 kills, 212 losses. 
Toast also coming up for his team. 7-7 seven and seven with 81 damage. And the remaining three players on more. Not putting up too much for damage, but they do have a lot of units remaining. They must have been on the defensive side of the map for more. Uh, we have Skeletor 7-0 with 33 damage. Very well done. Uh, Bishop 1-3 with 3 damage. And Gandalf 1-0 with 0 damage. And uh, looking over at Victus Semper, we have Nailot 2 and 14 with 29 damage. He was taken to hurt this game, uh, accidentally losing a Tro AFK as well. And uh, Sir Lothar, 19 kills, 12 losses, 77 damage. Severian, 10 kills, 12 losses, 70 damage. 8 kills, 1 loss uh, for Daksha. He's, he's going to get 62 damage. The Slickster, 5 kills, 6 losses, 34 damage. And Cyclops, not getting any kills for his team, taking 11 losses and only managing to net 13 damage, not able to contribute much for his team. Looking over at the kills and damage versus time, we have VS getting out to the lead in kills. Well, the earliest lead was taken by Men of Rohan, it appears, actually. And damage did stay fairly even between these teams as well in the very early part of the game about midway through you have vs dominating in kills for the most part but then losing uh their advantage in damage which followed up with losing their advantage in kills and uh from there men of rohan really took over the game they had that early ball tag they secured it uh gave them the early ball advantage you could actually you might actually think that VS tried to push around this time on the graph as uh, that is when they start losing quite a bit of units and I recall they did have a 10% advantage uh, at one point in the game I imagine it was about right here but yeah so that is how uh, that game is going to end up we have men of Rohan with an eight yeah it's an eight point lead I believe I said the score wrong before no I said it right before yep yeah, it's 19 to 11 men of Rohan on game two dark Canyon captures we'll see, we saw how the impassibility <laughs> of the large hills here really provide an extra element of protection and aggression uh, for spiders and solus especially uh, when teams tend to love to stick the balls up in these impassable areas we'll notice uh, on the contrary that men of rohan kept it protected with their artillery and berserks as well making it much more challenging for vs to push the position and also forcing their opponents melee if they did push through three small choke points uh, they did a good job securing this victory netting their team the lead we'll have to see what happens in game three will vs come back or will they go home by the hand of the men of rohan thank you all for watching ouch oh, almost 120 yeah over 125 damage advantage by men of rohan on their opponents in this game stay tuned folks and uh thank you for watching i appreciate it if any of you out there were uh, part of this myth world cup 99 experience be sure to leave some feedback i would love to uh catch up on any future casts of these matches um or any uh if you were played in any of the top 16 for 2000 or 2001 i will also be covering those later on 
and I would love to have you come on in and join me in a dual cast, talk about the old times, and uh, explain to me a little bit more and for the rest of the audience uh, some extra content about what's going on. So we will be going on to game three. This is par 73. Thank you for watching. Men of Rohan lead it. 19 to 11. See you in the next game and GG.